<laughs> Are you Mary Morano? Yeah, I am. This is my senior project. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do doing something else. Yeah, I'm not flexible. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Mary Morano. This is my senior project. I hope you enjoy. Okay, <laughs> so that's just a little introduction. Uh, okay, so um, my senior project this year was to, well, I chose it. It was designing um, my own line of clothing, and this is kind of just like a forward, like that's kind of the product. But um, I had a bunch of questions that I started out with. Um, so, what was the most cost-effective fabric choices? Um, what are the problems with designing your own line of clothing? What did others observe to be the most challenging part? Um, how does one make an outline on paper, just like the vision in your head? Um, what is the most time-effective way of doing my project? So, um, all of these questions I kind of came up with by myself. Like, I didn't have one thing that I was specifically researching. Rather, like, I would rather do the project and then kind of research as I go, um, which I know kind of wasn't the point, but Mr. McGrath and I talked about it and decided that, that would be a good thing to do because I didn't want to put like a definite label on where I was going with it, just in case it like wasn't what I envisioned, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess the idea kind of came from, I used to sew a bunch when I was little um, and just make dolls and whatever, and then um, time kept on moving and I kind of lost my my sewing ways so I decided that it would be a good thing to like get back into it and um, start um, I don't know designing my own clothes and I would always go shopping with my dad and we would pick out a bunch of stuff but I always thought I could make it better or like change something about it to fit me better so um, yeah so then I met up with my mentor who I chose which is Trish Grinter, who owns a store in Vineyard Haven called Frock, and it's a little store, like, kind of um, across from the Black Dog, and she is a seamstress, and she, um, essentially, we came to the conclusion that we would not put a label on, like, how far we were going to go in the project, but rather um, start somewhere with, like, the fabrics that I ordered, and then kind of make patterns, do whatever, and then see where we end up because putting a label on it would just kind of stress me out and like I wanted to make a bunch of different things opposed to making one thing again and again and again. So the fabrics that I chose were at first it's called um, Jersey Knit and it's basically just a comfortable, I don't know if you want to feel it, but it's just like a comfortable kind of... Yeah, I don't know. I don't wow. Know. Yeah, I know. Um, but, so we started with that one because the idea was that I would just have like a super comfortable line of clothing because I'm all about the comfort. And then um, as I kind of got better, so I start actually, I'll just go through. So I, I think my first, well my first was this and it's not cute, but it's just like reversible so I could, you know, 
get the general idea. Um, and then after that, I kind of started making, I don't, I don't remember which one was my first one, but this dress was one of the things that I made. So as you can see, you can wear it front or back because um, making the neckline was really hard for me at first. But um, so yeah, so we started with that material and I think I'm gonna go do that. So um, I guess I'll just describe this now. So these are the machines that I use it, used. Um, this is a serger, which makes, uh, you can see it here. It's like a, it really adds them together, you know? So that is that. And these are the spools that you put on the serger. And then, so that's just used to kind of merge things together. And it chops as you sew. So basically, if you don't have a clean finish line, like if you cut it out with an un, like very rugged, I guess it'll kind of put you back in line. It doesn't make straight lines, but it helps. And then this is the straight stitch. So. Basically, when you sew, so a straight just, stitch is basically used to like, say you overlock this, and then you can fold it over and do a straight stitch just to like secure um, the sides or like, I mean it can be used to add things, like to sew things together obviously, but it's not the one that I would choose, I guess. Um, so then as things kind of progressed, I used zippers in two of my things. Um, and so this is the foot of the sewing machine and you would change the foot to a zipper foot, which is like, it was very interesting learning about the machines and like kind of what goes into it, like even threading it is kind of difficult, so that was interesting. And then these are some of the tools. I have them here just to like show you, but these are kind of what you use on every single piece of clothing. So like this one's a French curve and it's used for like necklines and armholes. So it's like the perfect curve. And then this one's a hip curve, so it's like perfect for the hip. Um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of different things that I didn't know that you use, such as paper scissors and fabric scissors, which is interesting because you cannot interchange them. So that was something cool that I learned. Um, but yeah, so then I, we move forward with the fabric because, I mean, it's not necessarily easy to sew on, but it's easier than, um, I don't know, it's easier than corduroy or like denim, say. So we moved from from the jersey knit to sweatshirt material, and I don't think it's in this shirt. Um, we used sweater material, um, and I should talk about the fabrics a little. So cost effective wise, I kind of, I researched what would be the best um, and most cost-effective fabric I could use. Um, and by cost-effective, I mean like just yard-wise, if I'm gonna make a shirt, what is the, like how much does, what a yard of sweatshirt material versus jersey knit cost? And like, cause I found out that I personally, to make a shirt require like 1.5 yards, but it's obviously different for everyone. So. Um, that was an interesting fact, I guess. And then, um, so then after we did that, so I guess I'll, I'll show you basically the start of um, a piece. I don't know which one this is, but so basically um, what I did or I learned that you have to do is you get pattern paper, which is this. Um, it's just normal paper with one inch boxes, which makes it easier to fold, cut, do whatever. And this, I think this was, yeah, this is this. So it's kind of cool to see the progression that you make when you make an item. But it was definitely a bunch of tri trial and error. So um, recently, this is just an example, I made my prom dress. And I started out with just a, like a, test run, I guess you could call it. So this is what I thought it was going to look like. I took two pieces of fabric and I added them together and like kind of made just a prototype just so I wouldn't start it and then have to take it apart and stuff. So this is what I thought it was going to look like. And it's cool to see that this is the end, end of it. Well, I mean, it, it's not actually, but it is basically. So it's much different. So I'm glad 
that I made a prototype. But um, yeah, so then this is, yeah, these are the, um, so actually I think I made two of these because it was too big. So it's definitely a lot, I learned that it's a lot of trial and error. Um, and it, it could be potentially frustrating for people because I think that's kind of why sewing fell off a little bit um, coming into times of now when there's like social media and like easier things to do. Um, sorry, this is so much talking and so little. Um, but yeah, so I guess one of the biggest things that I learned was trial and error and um, kind of why like why sewing is less popular now is because um, it is pretty tedious like you can easily put sewing on the machine and the machine stops working or does something wrong and then you're just like whatever I'm giving up like this is not fun so that was, it was definitely tedious but really interesting learning that um, and a lot of people asked where the name came from and this is my little cousin, Anora, and we call her Nori, and she's just adorable, so I guess that's kind of where the name came from. Um, but yes, yeah, so then moving forward, we I thought that I kind of wanted to do more um, like harder fabrics, I guess you would call them, um, which would be corduroy, which is definitely hard. It's like, yeah, you can only go one way, and it's just, I don't know, really tedious. So I guess um, I made this set. And this is what I use the zippers on. So um, to put a zipper in, it's basically like you have to sew this shut, and then you sew the zipper in, and then you kind of cut away the excess. I don't know. So it's like kind of, I guess that was my best explanation of that. But so, yeah. And then, I don't know how to show this, but basically, it was, I don't know, it was interesting using corduroy, I guess. I'm glad I made the jump. But um, back to the questions that I, were, I was asking. So I definitely learned a lot throughout the course of this project. Um, so I guess my initial question was how do I make an outline on paper turn into something that I think, because I'm not necessarily like an artist type of, I don't know, I, I would rather just make it and then I don't know how that be that. Like I don't like to sketch things, and that was one of the things that I wish I had done beforehand because it would have been cool to see like what I envisioned and then like what actually came out. So I'm sorry. Um. So yeah. Um. That was that, and then so I just have. It. I don't know. So one of the big things that I've been asked is like where I'm going forward with this. So I made all the, these um, pieces. I guess I can show each one. Um, it's a turtleneck. Um, these are just some tops that I made. These are with the jersey knit. Um, these are also with the jersey knit I made the other day. Um, this is two. This is the sweater material. This was also, so this was interesting because putting a pocket on is actually a lot harder than you would think. Um, you have, it's tedious in a sense that to get it under the machine, it's kind of a process. So yeah, and then you can add a little sweater. And then this was a cotton blend, which I kind of got in the middle of the process to try to um, switch it up a little. And then the corduroy and another little shirt. So and those are the pieces. And then um, things that I wish I had done differently. Um, I, I wish I had drawn sketches, obviously. That would have been really helpful, probably, for future me, but I didn't. And then um, I, should have, I wish I kind of had talked to more designers about what they had noticed when they did their when they started clothing ones. I don't know where I would necessarily find people like that, but it would have been cool. Um, I did research one woman who thought that the most effective way of doing this would be to um, 
to get to make five pieces and then mass produce them from there so like kind of start little and then go big which was kind of where I was going with mine like I kind of wanted to do like original things which was another piece of my um, senior project kind of like there's no one in the world who has that exact dress which I think is kind of where mass production gets lost in the mix of things because like I could walk down the street and probably see like a couple people wearing this but whereas something like that it's like completely different um, and something that I wish I had done is <laughs> is recycle more so that basically means like I could have gone to the thrift store got a couple pairs of jeans like cut them up and then made a skirt out of them and I think that is kind of a cool concept and I tried to I, I dabbled with that but I just I don't know it just didn't end up happening but so that's kind of something I wish I had done and then um, yeah, so then another piece that I found kind of interesting was Forever 21, which is obviously that huge store now. It started as like a tiny store in the States where they were like literally sewing in the store, in the front of it, just like making these pieces, putting them on the rack and selling them for like a dollar each, which is like kind of interesting because that's not necessarily how you would make profit. But then once I read more into it, it was interesting because they... Um, that's how they like built up by selling less kind of they end up with more and it now it's like the biggest store ever but yeah um, so and also another thing is my time like how I use my time because I wanted to make a bunch of stuff but also if I spent all my time doing one thing then how like how would I get to the point that I wanted to be at kind of so um, I figured out that if I made or started a piece every other day, then I would end up with the amount that I wanted. So that was fun and interesting to learn because I started out just like kind of really slow, not making a bunch of stuff, and then now we're here. So, um, yeah. from a prom store and it had like all the jewels and whatever and then it was a, it was very like it was a very expensive dress and I kind of it kind of put things in perspective to me when I started making things because I could buy this like I, I bought this is like from the prom dress that I ordered this I could make another one but like and it was I think it was like $30 no 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 it was like $20 for like a couple yards and then I can make a dress like that. So, I don't know, it put into perspective how materialistic, not, oh, well, that's a mean word, but like how, yeah, materialistic things. If that was, say, 20 bucks, yeah. Um, what would the markup be if you were to sell it? Um, how much is it like, in the shops so on the island? I mean, if I were to sell that on the island, it would, I could probably sell it for like over $100. And like people would probably be like, oh, that's fair, like that's reasonable, which is super interesting. But it's like a four hundred percent high bar. Yeah, just like the rest of the Yeah. How much did you spend any time looking at the business aspect of it? Um. Yeah, I did. So I think that's kind of where I want to head in the direction. I wanted to get a staple out first, and just kind of because I didn't want to promise be like, oh, I'm going to sell all these clothes, but then like I have no idea what they look like, and I have no idea what they're going to be, but I'm going to do it, you know what I mean? So I kind of wanted to do it for myself first and kind of see what I could make and then do that. So the business aspect, I was talking to my dad about this and we like, I could potentially do like five items a year and then mass send them off and mass produce them. But that kind of defeats the purpose of like uniqueness, I guess. But I mean, I definitely could do that and I don't know, mark them up a lot, but that, I don't know, that's, I, I'm not, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, on the marketing side of things, what would you label it and who would you market it to? You know, I mean, obviously, you know, a young girl coming out of high school, would you focus on 
you know, young girls, um, you know, in high school or college, uh, and, and how would you focus on an audience, you know what I mean? Because I think just like anything you do, you're looking at the audience and then what do they want? Um, so you can either show them or focus on what they want, or you can create something that they don't even know they want, and then that's your business model, you know? So who would you market it to? Somebody like you? Yeah. Or to... Yeah, I would definitely go the direction of young girls. Um, I mean, a, a bunch of my friends have like asked me to make them things because of like the style that I, I don't know, it sounds like I'm bragging, but it's just like, I'm, like, like a bunch of my friends have asked me to make them like similar things to the things that I've made. So I think that's kind of a good judge um, of like where, who I would sell it to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would definitely go the route of young girls, like college, high school. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, defining your vision is very important to, to kind of look at something and say, and, and maybe feel a little bit not unsecure at this point, but you should be confident because I think what you've done is really amazing, you know, and, and you're welcome. But that's, that's where you have to be like, yes, I'm Mary Murano, and I'm a clothing designer, and I make radically awesome clothes, and you need this. And if you can figure that out and deliver that, then people will want to buy it, not only your friends, but other people who are attracted to what it is, what you have created. So that's right. that's something that you should work on moving forward, in the, in the, even the business side of things. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, I totally agree. But there's, I mean, there's another part of me that, I mean, I, I do, I really think that would be spectacular and obviously like a dream. But there is something like super cool about having just like one thing out of all of I mean I guess I could keep it that way at some points but yeah no I totally agree that that would be um, a good yeah I think what Mr. Vandal was saying is um, to develop Mary Murano as a brand yeah so when think, someone thinks about Mary Murano they, they go right to that look mm -hmm. and they know what that is yeah yeah no, yeah, yeah that, that, that's really part of it yeah cool. and that's like you know what you were saying before with your father that if you came up with like your vision, people know what that is and they define that and they say, okay, oh, Mary every year puts out 20, you know, things, you know what I mean? She puts out a certain amount of tops or dresses or she specializes in skirts and, you know, and it's all super fun, casual, you know, yeah. attire and then people are attracted to that and they want that and they yeah. follow you and, you know, and then... Um, I think it would definitely also be a lot um, easier because I obviously had just put myself in a situation where I didn't know what I was doing, but now that I kind of, like I feel so much more experienced now that I've done this in this sense, like I um, feel like I could confidently make uh, whatever anyone would want, you know, so it would just be, it would be like a lot easier to produce new things, whereas like when I was first starting, it was really challenging because I had to think about how I was going to make it because I just didn't know like, the rules or what I was supposed to do and then what, what it was going to be. So, yeah. Okay. Um, you said something earlier about um, was it the design process and you, and you had a mentor, but yeah. would you ever think about bringing in some kind of a partner to help you in the sketching and the designing part, and you are the the uh, you know the yeah. manufacturer and the I mean, I would, final. I would person. love that because I, I mean, as fun as sewing is, like it's super like tedious. But yeah, no, I I I thought about that. How if if I were to go down this path in my life, how I would initially get a squad of sewers and like we could just you know, bounce off each other and kind of yeah. Collaborate. Yeah, make up final product. What was the most fun? Um, swearing, like swearing them. <laughs> I, I really, I, I'm, I really like clothes, so it was a good project for me. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about it. I, I don't know. It's just something fun that I could do now, and like I, I really love it, and I think that I could definitely see myself doing something like this in the future. But I don't know. I, I'm not gonna go to college for it if that's the question. But yeah, I could see myself getting there.
Do you have a favorite design? Um, uh, I don't really know. Uh, not really. I, I, I admire everyone's work. And it's like really putting into perspective how, like, the clothes that I wear, like, how much. I mean, obviously, this or like these are mass produced, but I don't know, just. Like say someone had been in Houston, like Stina Sayer, how much actual like to come out with a new line every season of that is the right word? Not the last name of that volume. 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 Um, is so that's so hard. Like I, I, I don't even know. It doesn't mean like, like the quite the thought and the like. She's thinking. She must be thinking about that twice because I these things like I would literally be thinking about it for like a day and a half before I even went there to make it. And like, even my progress, like I would think about it, think about it, think about it, not go, because I'm like, I want it to be, you know what I mean? It's just like a lot of thought goes into it. And that's, I, I really admire designers because I had no idea. And, and there's a lot of successful, you know, people who are selling um, textiles from the vineyards, you know? There's No Epe and um, yeah. Stina and, uh, Yes. <laughs> well, Lara, you know, and there's other people who have roots here or something that has such a great marketing potential. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, it's really great work. Yeah, one more question? One or two more questions? Very clear. My general comment is wow. Yeah. To, to not have any idea, or knowing you that knowing your project was to make clothing, but to see how complete your project is, and the economic piece, and the fact that you produced that line, and the thought that went into it, I am blown away. Thank you. And my question is, you're not getting this sweater. <laughs> no, I, I have a little of it. My, my question is, are you as hungry for more of it, having finished it? Or um, are you I don't think I'm gonna stop. I think because I'm, I really well. I just or I'm gonna make linen pants is my next move. So um, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm going. But yeah, I don't think I'm gonna stop at least until I start work. But um, I don't know. It's also a really I the where I go is like a really special environment. Like I find myself wanting to go. Like I I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like I I really and Trish obviously is one of uh, the like she's a connection that I've made that is really amazing. So um, yeah, I, I definitely want to keep going. I'm planning on making. I want to go down the denim trail. I think I don't really know. We'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna keep going for sure. <laughs>